Look at this mess! No really, I finally picked up the Atari PC4 project again. We have a lot to talk about today, so let's get started right away. If you missed out on the first part of the series, just click the link above. For now, let's check the main course of today. We will talk about memory. What types of memory can you use in the Atari PC4 and what do you need to look out for? And we will discuss memory management. In the last episode I explained the PC4 was upgradable using SIP memory. SIP stands for Single Inline Pin Package and was a short-lived variant of the SIM memory. Short-lived because this memory was just not as durable as the pins would bend. Or worse, break, like happened in my case. And to fix it, soldering was again required. SIP only existed in the 30-pin variant, with an 8-bit data output and a maximum capacity of 16 megabytes per module. Compare this to later versions of SIM memory with 72 pins and a 32-bit data output with a maximum of 120 megabytes, which were used till the end of the 90s. The PC4 can handle SIP RAM modules of 64 kilobytes, 256 kilobytes, or 1 megabyte. And they have to be installed in pairs in one of the four banks containing two slots each. So you can install 8 SIP modules with a maximum of 8 megs of RAM. The modules in bank 0 and 1, or 2 and 3, need to be of the same size. You cannot combine two 1 megabyte modules with two 256 kilobyte modules in bank 0 and 1. A possible combination could be four 256 kilobyte modules in bank 0 and 1, and four 1 meg modules in bank 2 and 3, bringing the total of 5 megs of RAM. But there's one more thing. Remember the SIPs I bought to upgrade this PC? Well, they're not working. You see, the PC4 can only handle the 9-bit variant of the SIP modules, known as parity RAM. Back in the 80s, RAM wasn't as reliable as today, so a parity bit was installed in the form of an extra memory chip on board. If a parity error occurred, it would be stored in this bit, so a message could be displayed on screen and the system would stop, instead of continuing with faulty data. So if you buy RAM for the Atari PC4, make sure the number of chips on every model is uneven, like in my case for example 9 chips, compared to the 2 chip versions I bought. It took me a while to figure this out. I had this old Atari ABC60 lying around with 4 megs of RAM. I took it out and this is working perfectly in the PC4 now. Once the memory is installed on the board, we need to configure it. And to talk about memory management, we need to go back in time a little bit. Boring. In 1980, Bill Gates said that 640 kilobytes of RAM should be more than enough. And then applications like Lotus 123 came along and proved just the opposite. 640 kilobytes wasn't enough, and when memory upgrades became more popular, games started using it as well. Old PCs have different types of memory on board. The first 640 kilobytes is called conventional memory, and this was used for programs. The memory between 640 kilobytes and 1 meg was called upper memory and used to shadow the system ROM and load device drivers. Everything above 1 megabyte is called high memory. The first 64 kilobytes is something referred to as high memory area and can be used to load DOS. The rest of the high memory can either be used as expanded memory or extended memory. Expanded memory or EMS used to be called limb memory which stood for Lotus Intel Microsoft Memory. These companies co-developed the hack, so an 8088 processor used in the XT class PC could use more than a single megabyte of memory. XT PCs ran in what they called real mode. Expanded memory defines a space between 640 kilobytes and 1 megabyte, and uses this as a window into a much larger bank of RAM. The disadvantage of expanded memory is that it used bank switching. It's like taking a card out of a deck. The memory was accessed in blocks of 64 kilobytes. Another option was using extended memory. This is the area of high memory, everything above one megabyte. To use this type of memory, a 286 or 386 processor was needed. These machines ran in protected mode, but could also switch to real mode. Extended memory was a contiguous block, 
so you could use it much faster and more easily than expanded memory. Of the two types, XMS was the best, but it all depends on what software we will be running on this machine. Some older applications or games need expanded memory. If you enjoyed the video so far, please hit the like button. I really appreciate it. Thank you. I would like to build a nice retro gaming PC. So I will be configuring this 4 MB machine with 1 MB of expanded memory and the rest in extended memory. Memory management on a 286 was a bit of a drag. You see, drivers like High Memsys, which configures all RAM as extended memory and activates the 64 KB of high memory area, and memory managers like EMM386, which would turn a little part of the extended memory into EMS, weren't available until the 386 processor. However, to configure the RAM of the PC4, Atari had created its own memory manager called NEAT, which stands for New Enhanced AT. NEAT was delivered on the utility disk that came with the PC, and on Atari ABC computers it was available in the BIOS. Some of its features include the use of Shadow RAM, which copies the ROM data to the RAM memory for quicker disk access, faster VGA calls and much more. Interleaved memory to speed up the system, but this is only available if all memory modules are of the same size. You can check whether the upper memory area needs to be set up for expanded memory or not. This is for 1 MB machines. If you want expanded memory, you can set the size from half a meg to 5 megs, depending on the memory on board. And there is much, much more. Okay, that's it for this shorter episode. Next time I will go all the way. I already started adding a sound card. And I really need a CF card, because I'm tired of all the disc swapping. I will do a cleanup and a full retrobrite of all the parts, making it nice and shiny again. But that's for the next episode. Thank you all for watching, take care, and see you next time. Bye.